Hello and welcome back to Farmyard Academy. So we've got another video today um, where we're going to look at organic mechanisms from first year AS. So uh, we've got them listed down here. We're going to look at uh, nucleophilic substitution first. Um, we've put the reagents down. So the first type of nucleophilic substitution is uh, ammonia which is in excess. Uh, the reason ammonia is in excess is to prevent further substitution from the substances that you form. You can also do nucleophilic substitutions with sodium hydroxide under warm aqueous and also using potassium cyanide aqueous alcoholic. So nucleophilic substitutions all involve haloalkane, so we're just going to do a nice straightforward one, chloroethane. Um, and then we're going to do the ammonia mechanism because you do tend to get more marks for the ammonia mechanism in an exam. Uh, put your charges in. So carbon slightly positive and chlorine slightly negative due to the difference in electronegativity. Uh, chlorine will attract electrons more in its covalent bond, so that's the reason for the charges. Um, then we'll add the nucleophile, which is ammonia. It's an electron pair donor. Uh, and the first arrow is where the electrons are going to be attracted to the positive carbon atom. So first mark for putting that arrow in. Uh, when that forms a new bond, the carbon Cl bond is going to break and we're going to show that with another arrow which looks like that. So those are the first two marks uh, and that's sorted. And that will be the same for every other nucleophilic substitution. So whether that be sodium hydroxide or KCN, um, that's where you get your first two marks for. Ammonia, as I say, slightly different. You get a few more marks uh, for this. We've got the uh, NH3 group added now. Uh, nitrogen likes to form three bonds because it's in group five on the periodic table. Now it's got four bonds so we're going to show that with a positive charge and you're going to mark for that structure. Then we're going to finish off the mechanism by now showing that ammonia will behave as a base, not a nucleophile, and bases accept hydrogen ions or hydrogen so your next arrow is going to go from the lone pair of electrons to the H one of the H's of the nitrogen uh, then the lone pair of electrons are going to reform on the ammonia and we're left with our overall structure so we're left with two carbons uh, NH2 group like so okay uh, now this substance has got an NH2 group in it and we name those amino and because we've got two carbons, overall structure, which you would get another mark for, is amino ethane. Okay, so that's that one done. Uh, moving on to electrophilic addition, uh, which usually involve double bonds and alkenes. Uh, you can do electrophilic addition with hydrogen bromide, with bromine, or with sulfuric acid. We're going to do the sulfuric acid one because it looks a little bit more complicated, but they're all exactly the same really. Uh, so first one we'll start with a nice straightforward one, ethene. Make sure you always draw out your sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid when it's drawn out looks like this. Uh, again put your charges in because it makes it a little bit easier so the hydrogen slightly positive, oxygen slightly negative and the double bond on the CC is also negative because there's lots of electrons there. So first arrow Door bond is going to be attracted to the positive hydrogen, and then that's going to force the hydrogen oxygen bond to break, uh, and that's our first two marks. And then we're going to draw out a reactive intermediate, which is a carbocation, and we would always put the positive charge on a tertiary carbocation first, then a secondary, and then a primary. Um, tertiaries are the most stable, then secondary, then primary. In this instance we can only form primary so our major product is just going to go for a primary uh, carbocation um, and then we're left with this structure because we've lost a hydrogen and our final arrow is going to go from the lone pair to the carbon. So ultimately our structure looks like this. Um, sometimes people struggle to name these but really quite straightforward. If you know a bit of our UPAC, all we've got to do is break it down. Hydrogen, sulfate, ethyl group. So if we bring those together, we've got ethyl, hydrogen, sulfate, 
and there's your next mechanism. Final mechanism we're going to look at in this video, obviously we'll finish them off in other videos, but for, for this video we're going to look at elimination. Uh, again, slightly different conditions than substitution. It's You're looking for potassium hydroxide, hot ethanolic. Um, again, it's with a haloalkane, but it's just different conditions. Whereas this time, the nucleophile will behave as a base. So we now know that bases accept hydrogen. And all we're going to do is we're going to show that via this mechanism. So KOH is ionic, so it'll dissociate an aqueous solution to form the hydroxide ion and this now behaves as a base. So our first arrow is going to take an adjacent hydrogen. So you can take any hydrogen that's adjacent to the halo um, halogen atom. What you can't do is you can't take, I'll just cross it out, you can't take the hydrogen that's opposite, but any other hydrogen you can take. Uh, so lone pair takes a hydrogen that forces the bond go up to form an alkene and then the bromine which is a good leaving group like most of the halogens gets kicked off um, and then overall you're left with an alkene so in this instance we're left with propene and that's it so have a go write them out a few times um, learn some of the conditions and, uh, and you can't go far wrong. So hopefully that's helped and see you on the next one.